This is Soulful Living on Empower Radio. Here's your host, Terry Williams. Hey, wherever you are in the world today, I welcome you to another 30 minutes of Soulful Living here at Empower Radio. I have got the biggest smile on my face. I'm um, looking at the cover of this super cool book called Blessed Are the Weird, a Manifesto for Creatives by Jacob Nordby. And a few years ago, somebody told me that the definition, the Celtic definition of weird was life. I never Googled it. I just kind of went with it. I loved it. It totally made sense to me because my life has been um, one uh, one weird thing after another. And when people tell me I'm weird or that my mom's weird or my sister's so weird, I embrace it. I love my weirdness. I have found my tribe among some of the weirdest people in the world, including my husband. You know, we always say we took the weirdest of each other and um, have blended them together. And I think my guest, Jacob Nordbury, would totally agree, based upon that title, that weirdness is a blessing. Uh, My favorite quote in the book and on Jacob's website is... Uh, I think what led him to the path of weirdness, uh, or at least this book, uh, and I'm going to read it. Blessed are the weird people, the poets, misfits, writers, mystics, heretics, painters, and troubadours, for they teach us to see the world through different eyes. So let that kind of sit with you guys, and I welcome Jacob to Soulful Living. Hi, Terry. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm really well, thank you. Thanks for uh, having me on the show. I'm super excited, and I mentioned before we came became live here that I had like 20 different sticky notes throughout the book. It was so poetic to me. I resonated with so much of it. Um, You know, the first few chapters, you kind of describe the the poets and the mystics, and the misfits, and I i had to stop for a few minutes because I could see myself in so much of it. Mm-hmm. Mm. I love hearing that, uh, Terry, because not everyone does, and I understand that. In fact, I had a couple of good friends of mine read it, and, um, you know, of course, my caveat when I give a book to a friend is there is no, there are no strings attached. The, you know, our friendship does not rely upon you reading this book or liking or anything else. So, but anyway, this guy it took a few months and he had read through most of it and he called and he had a couple of things about the book that he didn't understand or didn't love. And, and, you know, we're good enough friends. I said, well, Mike, here's the thing. This book isn't for everybody. And I get that. And I'm not trying to uh, set up a divide here, but not everybody is going to have it ring the bell in their heart. And so it's really okay. And we ended up having a very productive conversation about that, uh, because, you know, I wasn't defending the book, but when I hear people say, oh, this rings a bell, it does my heart good, because I know that someone for whom it was written um, found it, you know? Yeah, absolutely. You know, I always say, even with my show, that if, if it touched the lives of one soul, then I've done my job well, right? I can't tell yeah. you how many of my own friends have never listened to my show, have never read my stuff, <laughs> any of that. And that's okay because I'm still going to show up. And thankfully that's what you're doing. Showing up. Yeah. Well, well, and it's such an interesting journey too. Um, I loved some of your comments as you were starting this today, Terry, and, and the title of your show, you know, soulful living for me, that is the only real cure for the turmoil the world is experiencing right now and has been for a long time. It's not just recently that, you know, we've been experiencing higher levels of turmoil in the world, but, but we, we are coming to a, an apex point, I feel, of, of a lot of um, underlying issues that are coming all the way to the surface. And what I notice out there is, and in here as well, is the question of, okay, so what do I do about it? Mm-hmm. And so when you contacted me uh, to, you know, come on as a guest in your show, and I was looking at the title of your show, that is really 
what this book is all about is finding the voice and listening to the voice of soul and Mm -hmm. finding out what that means. And a lot of people have this sense that um, soul is some super spiritual or mystical or religious experience or something like that, and it certainly can be. Mm -hmm. But I like to strip away all of the definitions and paint and just say that the soul is that underlying heartthrob of something real, something alive that is in me and it's in all of us. It's in all of us. Um, it's what's truly alive. And that true aliveness seeks to perpetuate life in a way that will be good and connected and it will serve all of the creatures on earth. And so I don't require people to sign up for some kind of idea about what soul means. Um, my feeling is, hey, the truth of the, of the of our core nature is that we want to find solutions. So anyway, I feel that the, what you're doing with your show and the message you're spreading really is the single antidote to what ails us right now. I love what you just said there, and I'm going to encourage Nate to uh, take that um, last two minutes as a little snippet and send it to me and also put it up on up on our page. I absolutely love that. And it's interesting because I was having a conversation with my son. He's 27. And um, that was, I mean, you said it so eloquently compared to how I as a mom said it to him today. Right. I said, dude, you know, you got to find what speaks to you. You know, you got to find what inspires you and serves Mm -hmm. your highest good. That's it. You know, wherever you are in this life and and that's what I think for everybody. We, you said it perfectly. That's what soul is. It's finding that spark, that, that light in yourself. And then hopefully, man, you'll spread that light out to everybody else. And if you don't, that's okay too. <laughs> right? Well, right. That's it. And that's Terry, exactly. And by the way, when I have conversations with my kids, um, I, I start out with, dude. And, uh, Isn't that hilarious? <laughs> It doesn't come out like some sort of eloquent radio show talk, so I get that. In fact, I, I had a, a conversation with my youngest son um, this weekend, who's 16 almost, and you know, struggling a bit to to get in touch with something that that will will sort of light his fire. And so we we drove up on the mountains this weekend. Mm-hmm. And we had a, a long conversation, and I said, Jay, I'm I am curious. Okay, so we had had a angle, which was pretty rare for us uh, a, a night or two before, and you know, it got emotional and. But then we were driving, and I said, Jay, uh, let, can, we, can, can we just move into this space where I want you to know that not even as your dad, just as, as your fellow traveler, I am curious about um, what the dangling threads, the things that you desire, what, what you care about. And I, I'm, I can't pull them for you. I can't even point to them. I'm just curious. Like, what turns you on? Um, and if you're willing to talk to me about that, I would love to just go into a conversation that is you know, truly curious. And it turned into this amazing exploration together. And I watched his eyes light up and Terry, that's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. You know, that is the voice of soul. When I can, Mm -hmm. when I can see or hear in a voice that they are turned on or lit up. Okay. Now we have something to talk about here. Okay. So, so let me just kind of tap into that for a second. So what do you say to somebody that says, I don't know what that is. So as, as the creative that you are, and um, certainly soul inspiring, I, you wouldn't be here with me if you weren't, right? If you weren't in that place of wanting to inspire others. So what do you, what do you say to somebody that says, I don't know what that is? Well, uh, oddly enough, that's one of the most common things I get by email and by message and all of that um, is, you know, people will read an excerpt of the book or something and they'll they will send me a note and they'll say, I would, I would so love to follow my path with heart, but I have no idea where to start. Mm-hmm. And, um, Terry, I feel such humility when someone does that because I don't feel like I have the answer for them. And the process of coming to write that little first piece that you read, that little, you know, blessed or the weird piece, mm-hmm. that came after such a long and discouraging and difficult stretch of my own life where I had always not known. I had this sense of urgency, like I'm here on purpose. I have a mission, but I didn't know what it was. And that was intensely frustrating. And so when people show up with those questions, um, I I will usually just say, well, that's wonderful. 
And the fact that you're able to even admit that Mm -hmm. is fantastic. So if we can sit with that together and just say, I don't know, because soul exists not in the linear, here's my checklist and here's my flow chart for the rest of my life. Soul, Soul wants to speak in between the plans and the checklist items. And so frequently I'll say, if we can just soften our gaze, um, open our hearts and back away from trying to, pr- to force something to come out here. It's like the muse. Um, in fact, it's not like the muse. It is the it, muse. Yeah, soul is. is the muse, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's where I always start is let's, let's be curious. Let's, let's just sit here for a little bit because soul's been wanting to speak the entire life. Just those urges and nudges and irritations is part of that, you know? Well, and to be okay with not knowing, there's so much pressure on all of us to know what our passion is, know what our purpose is. You know, you need to be knowing this right now. And it, it's okay to not know. And, and, <laughs> and the joy is in being open to saying, I don't know. And yeah. I, I don't know. Right? Well, and let's face it. The, yeah, the, the, there is tremendous joy in that. And there's also tremendous fear. Yes, absolutely. The, right? It's, and it's terrifying to say, I don't know. And, mm-hmm. and, and Terry, really, um, when I say society has set, been set up this way, I don't think there's bad people building an evil society. Um, I feel like we've done this all together down through many, 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 many centuries. And we have a society now that is built on over and over many layers of, you know, uh, conditioning, belief systems, all these things. So that's when I say we, are, we live in a society that's built this way. That's what I mean. Mm-hmm. But I, I do feel like right now, people like you, um, spreading the message the way you are, and, and what I'm attempting to do, we are being asked to go through this radical redefinition of what success means. Mm-hmm. Um, because just as you were saying a moment ago, like, you know, there's all this joy and then there's all this fear. Um, part of the fear is that if I don't know what to do, then I can't be successful. So, unraveling that question of what is real success, um, that can lead us into something really, really new and different. Like with my son the other day, and it sounds like with your son, um, not pressing for, you know, as a parent being afraid, oh, my, my child won't be successful. Certainly I have those fears, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but then when I go, wait a minute, Jay, what does success mean to you? Right. You know, what, is that, what does that even mean? Right. I remember years ago when the kids were talking about, I, I have five adult children. You know, I say children. Wow. I have five adults. <laughs> I don't even know how to put it, right? They're always going to be my right. kids, right? But I remember years ago when one of them was uh, talking about going to college and not knowing what he wanted to do and he wanted to take time off and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I don't know if college is for me. And I'm like, college isn't for everybody. We need garbage men, you know, we need plumbers. We need everybody in this world. It's really about what what speaks to you. And you're just on a mission to find that. And so which kind of leads me to one of one of the quotes in your book. It it, it happens to coincide with uh the word weird, how I started out, right? My um my introduction for you was the word weird, just being life, but um you know, you talk about some different definitions of weird, and then you have this really beautiful quote that I loved, and it says, the art of living is to fall in love with life over and over again. It is no easy thing to walk through the world with an open heart. Like, that made me feel really weepy. Um, Embracing everything and also stand true, allowing no poison to infect us, but be cracked open often. Pour yourself into life, withholding nothing. Heal and be healed. This is the way of living in full. I loved that. And I think that that quote uh, really is in line with what we were just talking about. I agree. It was beautiful. Yeah. Well, thank you. Yeah. And you know, that's um, the reason that's weird, you know, <laughs> is, uh, is that is once again, that the world as most of us experience it requires us to wear armor Mm -hmm. and um, it doesn't value as a whole right now, doesn't value vulnerability. Mm -hmm. And I'll speak for myself, you know, I'll fight against being vulnerable as hard and as long as possible. Um, 
I've learned now down through many, many breakings and twists and turns of life that have forced me to learn how to become vulnerable better. But um, the fact is we aren't rewarded. Most people aren't rewarded for being vulnerable, being raw, being able to crack open and find out what's true and what's real and alive in this moment. So that's what I feel like is Terry. That's where, that's where the gold is. That's mm-hmm. where, and so what I've come to realize for myself is when I find myself resisting something that's right here, trying to help me see life through different eyes again, or become more fluid or take a new path. Um, you know, for a long time, my, my strategy to deal with that was to resist it or to try to overcome it or to escape it or something. I just keep learning that that's just going to prolong misery. Mm -hmm. The more quickly I can say, okay, okay, life, crack me open. Let's find out what kind of treasure is right now. Um, it just actually shortens the distance between, you know, where I am and what I truly desire. Mm. Right. And stepping in, just kind of stepping in full throttle instead of running away and avoiding it, you know, just being open to what that next thing is, whatever it is. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. So listeners, I'm chatting with Jacob Nordby. You can find all of Jacob's information here at the Soulful Living page at Empower Radio. Uh, We're talking about his latest work, Blessed are the Weird, a manifesto for creatives. Um, I was saying to him that I found, um, as much as I've read so far, I had to stop and reread some things, most of it very poetic, but something that I also found really interesting, Jacob, was uh, the list of people that... um, you said made the world a better place in spite of and probably because of their misfit ways. Of course, that was in the chapter under misfits. And um, I was fascinated by that list, both past and present. Uh, Some Mm -hmm. of them, which I totally, totally agreed with. I'm, I'm reading this list and I'm going, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh my God, yeah. Oh my God, one of my favorites, Robert Downey Jr., (laughs) <laughs> you know, Robin Williams, yeah. Tim Burton, yeah. oh my God, Abraham yeah, Lincoln, so many amazing people that are considered misfits. But, uh, you know, like I think of Robert Downey Jr., that guy is living with soul, right? He is, <laughs> he is one of the most <laughs> highly recognized misfits of our time. I love that guy. Yeah, me too. Me too. And, and you know, and the, the the other thing that I really hoped to do here with this book, Terry, was to help us understand that, um, like uh, people will uh, sometimes I'll post a, a quote on on Facebook or some or somewhere by some by someone I, I love like this, Ernest Ernest Hemingway or one of these guys um, or women who have you know made such an amazing impact in the world, and then I'll, I'll people will then sometimes um, want to attack the person and say, well, they were, you know, they were an alcoholic or they committed suicide or they Mm -hmm. did, you know, they did all these terrible, whatever it was. And, and, you know, one thing that um, actually in the first part of that chapter, Neil Gaiman, one of my favorite writers and wow, he's a weird guy, but he, he said this uh, years ago and it just, it has helped me so much. He said, the art isn't the artist. The poem isn't the poem, isn't the poet. Trust the tale, Mm -hmm. not the teller. And so it helps me when I look, read through that, a list of these amazing people to relax about the imperfections, relax about, you know, okay, well, they did this or that. I mean, of course, I don't want to admire someone who's a, you know, terrible to other people, but, but, but the fact is they, they had amazing beauty and things come through them um, that the world would, would be much poorer without. And so if I'm focused on their flaws or the way they're cracked or, you know, messed up, then I'm going to miss the beauty. And the same thing goes for me. The same goes for any of us who wants to let beauty out. If I'm focused on my flaws or the ways that I'm broken or can't show up well in the world or whatever, then then that's going to be the dam that holds back the flow of beauty, you know? Mm, yeah, absolutely. And, and, you know, it's interesting because I, I think about a lot of the comments that I've read um, about maybe Lady Gaga's performance at the Super Bowl, and I, I know I'm not really supposed to uh, date our conversations mm-hmm. here, but that was one of the most recent experiences where people were 
you know, really getting down on her about some aspects of her, her body and things that she said. And, and I felt like that. I'm like, oh my gosh, she's so creative. She's brought so many gifts to, Mm -hmm. to our world. Why are we focusing on that? Right? Exactly. But then again, it kind of goes back to something that I read in the book about creatives being uh, self-conscious and and what you were saying again about vulnerability, right? These are aspects that we, maybe we see in ourselves, you know, if we want to get deep here (laughs) for a second, but right, aspects that we see in ourselves in our own levels of being self-conscious because we are Mm self-conscious. So uh, it's really interesting. It's really interesting to to hear that piece of it and hear what you know, Neil Gatman is that it? G- Gammon? Uh, Gaiman. Neil Gaiman. Yeah. Right, because it's really about the tail. That's what it comes down to. Yeah. Well, right, and and again, trusting trusting where that comes from in mm-hmm. in all of us, in myself, you know. So if I if I get so focused on, well, I'll never be a real writer because, you know, I I might be a sellout or I might not be good enough at it or whatever. Um, then that means I'm, I'm, I'm putting too much pressure on the writer and not the, and not the story itself. Mm -hmm. But if I can relax that part and say, I don't know how I'm going to have this come out of me. Well, and this book, this book is an example, Terry. I mean, I started writing it in 2013 and, and had to write, I think six drafts of it before I got tired enough to just say, okay, I think it has to be done and we have to just give it to the world. I didn't feel at any one point in there and, and even up to the time of, of publishing and releasing it, I didn't feel like, oh, wow, this is a perfect work and it's going to, you know, say everything I was, but no, I felt highly insecure about what I had written and wasn't at all sure that there'd be anything left in it that would be useful. And so it makes me completely grateful when people come back and say it was useful because Honestly, if it were left up to me, um, it probably wouldn't have ever seen the light of day. <laughs> Boy, do I understand how that goes. You know, every time I speak to groups here, especially locally, when I have to, I'm great on the radio, right? I'm great. I have no problem with that. <laughs> but when I have to go mm-hmm. in front of a crowd and um, be vulnerable and, mm. you know, share myself and share my work, uh, before I get to that place, I'm always thinking, oh, my God, I, I can't do this. What, what am I doing this for? Why, why did I even say I would do this? What was, what was I thinking? And then mm-hmm. afterwards, when somebody comes up to me and says, oh, my God, thank you so much, you know, for showing an aspect of yourself or sharing a tiny piece of information that they could take away with them that, that helps them embrace change or whatever it is, wherever they're at on the path, it makes a difference. So I totally get that when you were saying, I would just assume not even do the book, right? <laughs> yeah, truly. Um, and, and in fact, I tried to walk away from it a number of times, Terry. I, had a, I used to have a show on Empower Network called Bless All the Weird. Mm-hmm. And, um, and, you know, I have a Facebook page that, you know, I started back in 2012 that just has kept going and going. And so it, I, I, many times I thought, you know what, this has had its day. It's been wonderful. Um, I'm really grateful for it, but I'm going to just kind of let it, I'm going to kind of let it sink into the background. But the problem was people kept coming and finding stuff and sharing stuff and they kept basically prodding me out of, uh, out of my cave. And mm-hmm. so at a certain point I said, all right, I, I have a responsibility to this message. This really isn't even about me. I'm its curator. Um, I'm its custodian, so I have the job of carrying this special message out there. And and which when it became a responsibility for me, like truly, okay, um, if you don't do anything with this, then that's that's putting, you know, it's hiding your light. Um, that helped me because I realized, you know what, this isn't for me. I'm not writing this book for my own self, uh, you know, advancement or my own ego. It really is because I, it's my job to do it. And so um, getting that clear helped me eventually have enough courage and perseverance to get through the rest of the insecurity and doubts and all, all the things that are around it. Well, and thankfully so, because um, from, from what I've read and um, listening to some of your podcasts over the years, they are still available here at Empower Radio, by the way, listeners. <laughs> if you want to listen to any of uh, Jacob's stuff, it's here. So, so listening to that, I get that. And I get that you're here 
and you're stepping up and I'm really grateful that you did. And I love that you said you were grateful. Well, Jacob, we're down to the wire. We have like a minute left. And mm. um, I really want to thank you. Thank you so much for, you know, for responding and uh, saying you'd come because I loved having you on. I'd love to do this again and sharing your message here. Um, I, I would, I'd love for you to give the listeners with something they could take out into the day to maybe celebrate their weirdness. <laughs> <laughs> well, Terry, thank, and thank you. I know we're down to the last few seconds, but thank you for hosting this and, and inviting me on. I just really have loved our conversation. And I would just say that I'll just read from the back of the book. Um, the only success now is living and creating a work of art life, unique, rich with meaning, naked of anything we don't care about, and ruthless about carving out something absolutely real from a world that has gorged itself on fakeness and become critically ill from it. And the only failure now is pulling back from that quest because of fear. So I would just say, let's all of us go out and redefine success and then live the life that is ours and become lit up by it because that's what the world needs most right now. Mm, that was beautiful. Thank you, thank you, thank you. 